Oh, are we on the air? Hey, gang, it's Brian from FX Billiards. Today we're going to talk about three rail position. Now, what do we mean about three rail position? We're going to talk about getting around the table using multiple rails to get position on your next shot. Now, most of the time when we're playing eight ball or nine ball, uh, as you see in the video, we want to use very short direct routes to our next shot uh, and move around the table in a very efficient manner. But there are times when the balls just simply aren't laid out that allow us a pattern where we can run them off with this minimal amount of movement around the table and we find ourselves in situations where we need to get from one end of the table to the other or one side of the table to the other using multiple rails. So here's a situation where we're on the six and we're going down table for the seven and we use three rails to get down table. There would not have been another route that would have allowed us to get this kind of position on this seven ball. Once again, we use two rail position to get position on the eight with this shot. Now, each of the examples I give you are going to apply to eight ball and nine ball. So regardless of whether you're an eight, nine, or 10 ball player, all of these samples will work for you. The other thing that I'm doing with each one of the examples that I give you is I'm gonna give you a lot of shots where you're getting position at another ball that's on the rail. That's so that you get accustomed to playing the worst case scenario. But you can see that the shot on screen, I use three rails to get position on a ball that is not on the rail. And the reason I went around the table on that shot was to get in a position where I can move towards the five ball, which was my next ball. So sometimes we're playing multiple rails, not just to get on the shot that we're taking, but to get on a shot that is two shots ahead. So here we have one of my favorite situations where we're playing the six ball and we need to get down table on the seven. The examples that I give you, it should be noted that we're going to be using running English on each of these shots. So in this case, we're going to play high right hand spin to come off of three rails to get position on this seven ball. Now you guys might say, well, how did I know I was going to get to that spot and not scratch or end up in a side pocket? The reality is if you learn these shots, these five shots that I show you, you will be equipped to play literally hundreds of different situations, regardless of where the cue ball and the object balls that you need to use to get around the table are located. Your most important takeaway from this video should be that you learn to use your own creativity to find these shots when they occur and use these five shots that I give you as a baseline to working your way around the table. So here's another very common situation. You're on the wrong side of this six ball and you need to get around the table to get to the seven. Here I'm going to play a high left hand shot. There's a little bit of force follow to help that cue ball get around the table. And you'll see that we can stop that cue ball anywhere we want. Our seven ball, as I said earlier, for illustration purposes, is against the rail. So I'm giving us the worst case scenario here. But we could stop this cue ball anywhere we wanted around the table just by changing our speed. What that means is, Regardless of where that seven ball was on the table, we could come off of one, two, three, or even four rails to get position on that shot. And that's one reason why I love these three rail shots so much, because you can use them in many, many different situations to get many different places on the table. So here's a situation we looked at at the beginning of the video. We play the one in the side, we're playing the two ball here, but we kind of got on the wrong side of the three ball. So what do we do? We come off of three rails, get on the other side of the four so that we basically are recovering our position. This allows us to get position on that five ball, which we need to have this side of an angle on in order to get back down table on the six. So as you can see, 
even with a wide open table, there's times that this multi-rail position is going to work to your benefit. So use your own creativity and problem solving to come up with these different scenarios, guys. The illustration on the screen shows that regardless of where that seven ball was, we'd used the very same shot to get position on it. So it could even be at the opposite end of the table and we could come off of two rails instead of three to get that position. Now here's a more exotic view of the same shot. And this is gonna require a good draw stroke. If you don't have that type of stroke to come back off of those two rails to get around the table, this is gonna be a very difficult shot for you. But imagine that we wanted to go forward and there was a cluster or a ball in our way and we couldn't go forward to go around the table. This is an alternative that some advanced players might take on. And we just finish out the rack with a series of a follow shot there. And then here's another three rail position high left as we go around the table with force follow to get pretty decent, not great, but decent position on this nine ball. If we put more into it, we could have an almost straight shot here, but this is an easy shot. No, it's not, but you get the point. So here we have another situation where the six and the seven aren't that far apart. A lot of players will try to hold up that six ball shot and play on the seven, but we could come around the table without any problems at all, totally let our strokes out, get around the table and get not just position on the seven, but position on the seven that is going to allow us to have easy position on the eight ball. So I'm gonna shoot this with a little bit of high right and move out into a way that we can get a nice easy play on this eight ball. For illustration purposes, again, I use three rail position, but that nine is pretty much sitting in the pocket. So we could have gotten on that nine a number of different ways. Now here's one that a lot of you are going to use very regularly. We're going to go from one end of the table to the other. This happens so much in nine ball. In eight ball, you get a pass. You have options. You can shoot your way from one end of the table to the other. But when you're playing balls in rotation like in nine ball, very often the balls that you need to make are going to be spread out maybe in, like in this case, nine feet apart. So we use two rail position on the seven to get on the eight after using three rail position on the six. Here's another one, high left-hand spin. We come around off of three rails and we get not a layup, but a much better shot on the nine than most intermediate players are going to get. Now this next one is very important. If you don't get anything from this video, get this shot down. You've got two balls on the rail. One is blocking the other. In this situation, we put them on the rail just to make it as difficult as possible. But we're gonna play high right-hand spin. Again, always running English on these shots, guys. The spin that will take you around the table easiest is the best way to remember it. So now, one ball in front of the other doesn't become an issue. We play high right hand again. This is similar to a shot we showed earlier in the video. We come off of three rails. We get down table for the eight ball. We don't have a layup, but we could have hit that as hard as we wanted to and got position on this eight ball. And now, easy position on the nine. So keep in mind, you can stop these balls anywhere you want along the way, but you just need to pay attention to the route that it's going to take. Also keep in mind, you can use these shots to break up clusters, to nudge other balls, to play position on shots that don't require three rails. Maybe your shot requires just two rails. Knowing the three rail route will give you hundreds of different situations. The greatest thing about these shots, guys, they require no math. You don't need to know the diamond system. You don't need to do anything special to use these shots. What is important is you learn these basic shots and let your creativity run wild. Too many people are trying to turn pool into a science experiment. In the real world, some of the most successful players are creative more than analytical. Have fun, guys. 
This episode is being brought to you by the Pool Players Logbook. Designed by pool players for pool players. The Pool Players Logbook is where you'll record all of the shots, drills, practice sessions, and playing situations that you'll want to refer to in the future. The book includes 120 blank pool table diagrams, eight graph pages to record your own growth as a player, 24 note pages, four to-do lists, six pages to record your win and loss records, and more. Only $6.95 for a limited time. You can place your order now at Amazon.com using the link in this video or at fxvillards.com. Order now!